in these problems, we're being asked to find the zeros of some functions. What are zeros of a function? Well, let me uh, show you with a, a quadratic function, a parabola. You might have a function that looks like this. And a zero of a function is where the value of the function, or the y value of the function, is zero. And that is where this crosses the x-axis. At both of these points, the y value of the function is zero. So we call those zeros of a function. And of course, functions can get much more complicated than parabolas. You can have functions that are squiggling around all over the place. So there might be many zeros of a function. Like this one seems to have uh, five zeros. So how do we find the zeros of a function? Well, typically what we do is we, we factor it, as I said, and then we set the thing equal to zero. And then we know that since uh, we're multiplying all these things together, um, you know, one at least one of them, or maybe all of them, have to be zero. So we just set these things, these factors, individually equal to zero. So we'd say 3x equals zero. And we'd say x minus 16 quantity squared equals zero. And x minus 6 quantity squared equals zero. Then we just solve them for x. So in this first one, I would just need to divide by 3, and I would get x equals zero. So for this particular function, it crosses the x-axis at zero. And let's try this next one. I've got this quantity squared. I can take the square root of both sides. And usually when you take the square root of both sides, you have to worry about having a, a plus and a minus answer. In this case, we've got 0 over here, so that doesn't apply. So we can just rewrite this as x minus 16 equals 0, because the square root of 0 is 0. And then to solve for x, I just add 16 to both sides, and I get x equals 16. And then we have x minus 6 quantity squared. I'll do the same thing here, take the square root of both sides. I get x minus 6 equals 0. We add 6, and we get x equals 6. In the problem, it says if there's more than one answer, separate them with commas. So we would probably write it like this, x equals 0, comma, 6, comma, 16, and just list them in ascending order like that. All right, let's try another one. Here, we have the first thing we have is this 3 up front. Uh, we don't really need to worry about that. We can just kind of throw that away. If we set 3 equal to 0, that doesn't make sense. Uh, but we can set these individual chunks um, in the parentheses equal to 0. So x minus 9 equals 0. And x plus 5 quantity squared equals 0. And x squared plus 4 equals 0. All right, let's solve these. So the first one, not too tough. We'll just add 9 to both sides. We get x equals 9. And on this one, we'll take the square root of both sides, and I get x plus 5 equals 0. And in this case, I need to subtract 5 from both sides to solve for x. So I get x equals negative 5. And this one, let's see, I would subtract 4 first. And I would get x squared equals a negative 4. And at this point, I would um, think I need to take the square root of both sides. And what I'd see is that I would be trying to take the square root of a negative number. When you take the square root of a negative number, you get an imaginary number as a result. And in the problem, it says find all the real zeros. So we don't even need to worry about this, because this would give us a couple of imaginary zeros. And we don't have to find those. So in this case, we've just got negative 5 and 9. So I'd say x is negative 5, comma, 9. So that is how to find the zeros, the real zeros, of some functions that are written in factored form.